Hi everyone, welcome back to the Eastfield Gunroom YouTube channel once again. Today we're going to have a look at a very, very modern competition sporting gun. You know, regular viewers of the channel, which I hope is all of you, will um, realise that a lot of the stuff we do is guns from, we've done guns from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, but we don't tend to do too much that's kind of bang up to date. And today, because of that, we're going to have a look at a Beretta 694. So the 694 was launched back in 2020, and it was a revamp, and a massive revamp at that, to replace the 692. 692, tiny bit of history, came out 2012, and I think by the time it got sort of through the late 2018, 2019, went a little bit flat, and it was just ready for a change. And Beretta being a hugely, hugely innovative company, were probably working on this for three or four years beforehand, and the result of it was the 694. So first of all, the 694 is out and out competition gun. It is only available in, initially it was only available in sporting specification, then they did it in a trap, and then they did it in a skeet. Since then they've also done a 694 DTL, which is a down the line competition gun with a, a step rib, and they also do a 694 trap with a with a flat rib as well, Marlon Monte Carlo stock. So it gone, it's gone from being, you know, in its early early days, just a sporter and um, and then subsequently a bit of a trap gun right up to now where they've got the full range. And I also understand that potentially on the horizon there's also a 694 Black Edition, which the 692 Black Edition was very, very popular and had a huge following. So I'm sure that the 694 Black will be just as popular. So it's essentially a competition gun built on the 690 platform. So the 690 versus the 680, slightly wider. And what that does is it increases the feel and the balance between the hands of the shooter. If you didn't know what this was, you know, from a bit of a distance, you would think it looks a little bit like a Breta DT-11 and is in essence, kind of a baby DT-11. So if we start with the action, like I said, 694, 690 platform, been out since 2000 and... 13, I believe, something like that. A very, very popular gun, regardless of the discipline, whether it be the game shooters, play shooters, whatever. It certainly made itself a name in the shooting world, no question. So what they did with the 694 is they changed quite a lot of stuff. So if we start off with the action, now this is a Nissan coating, not a Nissan, that's a Japanese car manufacturer. It's a type of coating that Beretta use, again, it's all done in their uh, in-house in their factory. I've been there many, many times. You don't get to see the coating processes, but they are all done in-house. I can assure you that the blue in, the nitride in, the nickel in, all that kind of stuff, the chrome in. This is a very, very strong uh, finish. It's in, impervious to rust or it's, you know, very, um, very resilient, very durable because let's face it, if it's a competition gun, it's going to be out in all weathers, you know, competition shooters don't really care if it's raining or not. They want to go out and shoot plays week in, week out. And that's where the coating on this gun comes in. Now, if you look at the top lever, it's a slightly different design to a standard 690. It's got this sort of fatter paddle. Again, that's just because it's a bit chunkier. You know, you can be a bit more um, rough with it, if you like, in all shooting conditions, because it is designed to go and shoot a quantity of clays. Having said that, there are people shooting these at a very high level. You know, people like James Bradley Day here in the UK will no end of stuff with the 694. But also, it's at a price point where club shooters will buy one, you know, which they may be fair with the shooters, who knows. The top lever was a big change from the 692. The 692 had this kind of rubberized thing. And the problem with rubber, of course, is, it, you know, it contracts and it expands you know, depending on the, the temperature. And there was issues with that from day one. So they did away with that. And this is essentially very, very similar, slightly scaled down version of a DT-11 4 and iron. Nice, big, chunky, and get hold of it easy enough, and it does the job. Barrel selector is also similar. Uh, if you look at a DT-11, you've got the sort of the lines on the back of it. Again, very chunky, very positive, very easy to move, regardless if you've got gloves on, etc., because you've got a bit of extra grip there. If you turn the action over, then the similarities with the DT-11 continue because aside from the, the Nissan coating, you've also got the polished shoulders. And the idea behind that is that, you know, having 
a polish on an on an edged surface means that it's not going to wear as much when people carry it. You know, if you look at an old gun that's got a black action, like a Keeman, Pratsy, whatever, it's always noticeable that the gun's been used when you've got the, the bluing just worn on the edges and it's worn back in some cases to, to, to the bright work. Quite a clever thing. Also very modern looking with the chrome. I really like it. Really, really smart. And to finish off the DT11 comparison, it's got the famous Azuri blue line all around the action. 694 in these quite smart modern graphics and you've got Beretta along the top of it. Now barrels, this is where the big difference comes in between this and the DT11. The DT11, as I'm a huge fan of it, shot one for a number of years, we will definitely be looking at that later on the channel. But for now, let's just concentrate on the 694. So the 694 has got what are called Stelium Plus barrels and Whereas the standard 690, 691, 693s, etc., 695s have got stelium barrels, the stelium plus denotes that the forcing cones are longer. Now, the primary reason have, having longer forcing cones in a shotgun barrel is for increased ballistics, lower recoil, and less shot deformation, better patterns, etc. The forcing cones in a 694 are 360 millimeters from memory. If you go to a DT11, they're considerably longer at 480, which essentially means the DT11 will be a smoother gun to shoot than the 694 on paper. So this being a sporter, as you would expect, it has got a Beretta tapered sporting rib. 10 millimeters at the breech, eight millimeters at the muzzle. It's ventilated as all Beretta sporters are these days. If you go back to the 1980s and 90s, the 682s, etc. They weren't ventilated. I don't know what started them um, producing ventilated barrels, but I think it's a, it's a good thing, especially in a sporter, in terms of cooling down, you don't get any heat haze, that kind of stuff, which is a good idea when you've got a gun that's designed to shoot a lot of cartridges. What's interesting with the barrels on these, so we've talked about the, the tapered rib, uh, superior, fleur de lis HP steel shot proof, as you would expect, which is what everything tends to be going forward. Now. Following on from the success of the 692 Black, which was of course one of the predecessors to the 694, they have carried on with the barrel weight facility. Now, it was interesting with the 692 Black because what they did is they made the barrels lighter with the addition of a carbon fiber rib and then put barrel weight options on the, on the barrels, on the center rib, which kind of defeated the object with me because what in most cases, if you had a the 692 black and you put the weights on, it was back to the same weight as a standard 692, but that's by the by. So you can put barrel weights on this. They don't come supplied with the gun, but you can buy them additional cost, I understand. Now barrel weight of this particular gun are 1580, which you could argue in 32 inches quite heavy, I would have said, with the option to make it heavier still. Now we'll come on to that in a second. What Beretta also did when they designed the 694 is they changed the forend iron. Now they've played around with self-adjusting forend iron on most of the 690 series. What they did with this is they actually put a shorter forend catch on it and also an interchangeable wedge depending on, according to Beretta, how the shooter wants to load the gun. In, in, in what I mean by that is if you want the gun to sort of drop open for game shooting or simulated game where you're loading the gun very, very quickly, you might want to change the functionality of the forend and have the gun drop open a bit easier, a bit looser. Whereas if you just want the gun to remain, you know, crisp and tight for 50 clays every two weeks, you would leave it at the factory setting, but it can be adjusted. And like I said, with the addition of this shorter forend catch, that also makes it easier to remove and it increases the lockup on the forend. Just going back, to the barrels uh, in terms of the boring. We've talked about the forcing cones being 360 millimeters. The boring is 18.6 Optima HP tapered, which is the same as you will get on a DT11. Now I don't for one second want to make people believe that the DT11 um, is just a dearer version of a 694 with a huge inflated price tag, because it isn't. They are completely different shotguns. Yes, cosmetically, there are similarities, but you cannot put them in the same league. They are completely different levels, and I just want to clear that up. Okay, we'll come on to DT11 channel at a later date, I'm sure, no problem at all. Now, one of the big things with the 694 was what they changed in terms of the stock dimensions. I can remember a number of people saying to me about the 692, 
it feels a little bit skinny. Now I can remember picking them up and thinking, well, I've not got big hands. There's not really any palms well, and it is a bit slim, almost to the point that you would expect to find on a game gun. What's interesting is in terms of competition between Browning and Beretta, is in 2017, Browning launched a 725 Pro Sport, which was the first kind of sporter that had got a much fatter comb, a slightly deeper pistol grip, and a bigger palm swell. And it was really, really, really popular. In fact, I would say that it's the direct competitor to the 694. 694 came out a few years after, but what it did, I think Beretta understood that people, uh, particularly in the UK, particularly in the States, which of course will be two big markets for Beretta, wanted something that had got more feel to it in the pistol grip, you know, a better hand position, a better palm swell, a bit more wood in the stock. And that is what they've done with the 694. It is much, much more comfortable than its predecessor to hold in terms of a hand position. Fits lovely in the hand. You've got, like I said, a slightly tighter radius on the pistol grip. You like you'd associate more with a trap gun. Much more wood across the comb, which again, you know, from a gun fit point of view and a recoil point of view it's, it's a benefit and also like i said the palm swell is is just it feels really really nice and um, we looked at a, a gamba the other week which is a video that's coming up and it feels a little bit like a gamba typically italian and it really fills the hand nicely so for me that was a huge huge difference moving away from the 692 which just felt a little bit skinny in the hand and the problem with that is you can roll the stock and, and all sorts of stuff. So the woodwork itself is grade 2.5 walnut which is what is available in most of the 690 range. So when you get up to the DT11, 687, blah, etc you will then move into class 3. And so this is nicely figured, European and there's a couple of features I want to talk about on, the, on this stock. Now one of the big things about the 694 that Beretta banged on about when they launched it was these grooves in the stock here, which are interesting. Now, the idea behind this is it actually increases your line of vision, your line of sight. And I think that basically means that you kind of are less likely to lose the target and you don't have to lift your head up. And I've shot a few 694s. Don't get me wrong, a lot of what is in people's you know i think a lot of clay shooting can be psychological but yeah i i think it works i think you have a get a bit more peripheral vision because the the head of the stock is slimmed down and it's not so blocky so to speak as a technical term i like to use when i'm talking about guns blocky and it's good it's, i don't think it's a gimmick i think it works to a point of view to to a, to a degree not everyone will like it but it's there if you want to use it great moving on from the barrel weights we have got the b fast stock weighting system which was also available in the 692. And what you've essentially got is, if we remove the, uh, this is an 18 mil Breton Micro recoil pad. Just wanna to touch on that, really good recoil pads, nice and smooth, very easy to change. You know, they manufacture them in 13 mil right up to 28 with spacers. So whether you're a five foot eight guy or a six foot 10 guy, you know, ultimately they can, we can pack the stock out to get it the right kind of length. So. Remove the pad and underneath there, you've got the stop bolt hole and you've also got another hole. And in there, you can add these little disc weights. They are currently in the gun, so I can't show you, but they are in there. Um, they do 20 and 40 gram ones. So what you can do is you can balance the back end of the stock to exactly how you want it. You know, I like a gun that's quite heavy in the stock, which ultimately makes for lighter barrels. That's not everybody's cup of tea. So like I say, with the option there, you can tailor make it to exactly what you want. And that's the B-Fast balancing system. Should you find, incidentally, there's not enough weight, I think there's three or four in a pack, you can buy additional ones and get it as heavy as you want. Now this gun, with the weights in, weighs eight pounds, 13 ounces, which you could argue is quite heavy. It's getting on towards the weight, something like a Creek off Super Sport. But what it does is it makes the gun very, very steady, very smooth to shoot. So you know the previous owner has decided that's the kind of feel that he wants and that's what he's gone for continuing the b fast theme we have got the b fast adjustable comb now the b fast is the successor to the horrendous memory system that beretta used to put in the 682 goldie um which if you were had three three screw holes on the side three allen holes and if you got the wrong one it basically exploded internally which is not a great system not, not a great um feature so be fast much much better very very solid 
fully adjustable for windage and elevation. You get a nice little set of the spacers here, which you can use. Really, really good. Like it. No problem at all. 694, as you would expect with the competition gun, has also got an adjustable trigger. It's exactly the same trigger as they use in the 682, the 692, pretty much, in that it slides on a rail. You've got three positions. You can go to the front, to the back, to the middle. Absolute child's play. You get a screwdriver in the box to twizzle it. Um, move the trigger along, take the screw out, and then put it back in. It is different to the DT10 stroke DT11 trigger because, of course, those guns have detachable trigger groups, which is why they are different. To finish off, the 694 comes very nicely presented in a competition ABS style case. Three locks, so you can take it on a plane, no problem if you want to go shooting abroad. And of course, it's got this nice blue velour interior with a stock bolt tool. Case in point there, very important to periodically just tighten your stop bolt up, just make sure it's nice and tight. Um, similar case to a DT11, but the only thing you get different with DT11, I think, is a spare skip, which has got fire and pin springs, etc. So you get the additional recoil pad. So you get 18 and 23 mil, which is a, a nice touch. As I've mentioned, you can also buy a thinner, even thinner, and an even longer one, 13 and 28 mil. Optima HP chokes with coloured bands, which is the norm with 694s as it was with 692, so the color of the choke denotes what choke it is rather than looking on the side because of course that bit is in the barrel screwed in. So you've got red for skeet, cylinder four is blue, three quarters is black and a quarter and a half, which is in, currently in the gun, which is gold and green, as simple as that. Choke key, oil, and another little box of tricks here, and this has got your tools. So you've got your screwdriver to adjust your trigger with, and your Allen key to adjust your BFAST adjustable comb system with. Another interesting point, just to finish, is when the original 690 came out, the ejectors were not dissimilar to the 680 series with a bit of extra bits on, and actually had a cam in the fore end, which was, um, could be problematic. So what they've done now is they have made it super, super straightforward. If you've ever taken a ejector out of a 680 series gun, it's quite tricky. You have to push it in, twist it, and there's quite a lot of pressure behind those ejectors with the, the spring and the plunger, and you can you know, lose the end of your finger. So what they've done is they have machined the barrel out to accept these little magnets. So you get two spare in the box, and literally you take the, push the ejector forward, then you remove the magnet, and the ejector just pops out. Absolutely simple. Really, really simple, but really, really clever, in all fairness. So the 694, who's going to buy one? It is absolutely mid-range in terms of price point. So it is going to be the people that have started off with a silver pigeon that want to upgrade to a proper clay gun, uh, people who like the feel of the chunkier stock, bigger guys, to be fair, want the bigger palm swell, want the pistol grip. And yes... You could argue that a lot of competition shooters or club level shooters would like a DT11, but the DT11 is an awful lot of money. This gun ticks so, so many boxes in terms of its versatility. It's, you know, it's a very pointable bit of kit. It looks the part. It's engineered on a very, very, very reliable and a proven platform. Very impressed with the 694. It's only been around for three years now. I think it's going to be around for quite a long time to come. And... I've no doubt we'll be seeing more success with British shooters on the podium with the 694. If you've got a 694, if you like it, you don't like it, comment below, tell me about it. Any questions about this particular gun in general, obviously fire them at me. Don't forget to look at the website. Don't forget to keep liking and subscribing to the videos and the channel. And if I can help in any way with any queries, Beretta related or otherwise, fire them at me. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.